Most people see aging as wrinkles, sore joints, back pain, and grey hair. But scientists are constantly discovering the underlying mechanisms that drive the aging process. In 2013, Lopez, Otin, and colleagues proposed nine hallmarks of aging. Things like genomic instability, telomere shortening, mitochondrial dysfunction, and cell senescence. In 2023, they added three more to the list, such as chronic inflammation, loss of autophagy, and gut dysbiosis. In this video, I'm going to talk about a potential 13th hallmark of aging that I predict will be added to the list in the next few years. What I'm talking about is circadian clock dysfunction. There have been several interesting papers over the last few years pointing out that there's a strong link between the circadian rhythms and aging. What are these circadian rhythms? Circadian rhythms are your body's natural day and night cycles that repeat roughly every 24 hours. It's basically your body's internal clock that regulates your hormones, body temperature, energy levels, strength, and even blood pressure. For example, natural testosterone production peaks in the morning around 9 a.m., whereas your body temperature is the highest in the evening at around 6 to 7 p.m. The way aging comes into play is by blunting the fluctuation in these hormones. Younger people maintain robustness and big swings in their circadian rhythms. They produce a lot of cortisol in the morning, which is supposed to wake you up and energize you for the day. And they also produce a lot of melatonin in the evening to support sleep. Older individuals, on the other hand, have lower fluctuations in cortisol, melatonin, and body temperature. Their circadian rhythm is more flatlined. This graph illustrates it very nicely. You can see that adults produce a lot of melatonin and a lot of cortisol at the right times of the day. But for older people, it's nearly a complete flat line. I call this the chronic jet lag syndrome. Your body doesn't know what time of the day it is because there's no swings in these hormones. These fluctuations in hormones tell your body what time of the day it is and control all other hormones and other processes inside the body. As a result of that, older people sleep worse, they sleep shorter, they have poorer inflammation status, they have poorer metabolic health and lower energy levels. As a result of that chronic circadian disruption and chronic jet lag, your body experiences higher DNA damage and higher inflammation. There's overwhelming amount of research showing that circadian rhythm disruption increases the risk of neurodegeneration, cancer, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, and heart disease. Every function, every process, every metabolic pathway, every hormone is regulated by the circadian rhythms. If your circadian clocks are working properly, your body works like clockwork. If the clocks are misaligned, your body goes through higher amounts of stress and a greater requirement for repair that accelerates aging. I think we've all experienced jet lag at least once in our life. Imagine experiencing it 24-7. That's what I would imagine being 80 years old feels like. Now that we know the problem, how do you fix it? Circadian rhythms have three major hallmarks that degrade during aging. They are, number one, oscillation or fluctuation in different hormones like cortisol and melatonin. High cortisol in the morning, low cortisol in the evening. High melatonin at night, low melatonin in the morning. Number two, free running. That the circadian rhythm persists under constant conditions. It means that if you were to live in a dark cave for 24 hours, your circadian rhythms would continue to operate normally. High cortisol in the morning and high melatonin at night. Number three, entrainment or receiving the cues from the environment that regulate circadian rhythms, such as light, movement, food, and electromagnetic fields. All of these factors influence other hallmarks of aging and also the hallmarks of cancer, which means that as the hallmarks of circadian rhythms deteriorate, the hallmarks of aging and the hallmarks of cancer proliferate. You increase the risk of cancer and accelerate aging. I want to take a quick break to tell you about the Bond Charge Infrared Sauna Blankets, my go-to way of getting 20-minute sauna sessions on the go without needing to spend an hour to warm up a regular sauna. Taking the sauna is, in my opinion, one of the best things for your overall health and heart function. Studies show that taking a sauna regularly is associated with 63% lower risk of sudden cardiac death, 63% reduced heart disease mortality, 46% lower risk of hypertension, and 40% reduced all-cause mortality. This is mediated by an increase in body temperature and increased heart rate that mimic a cardiovascular workout while at the same time improving arterial stiffness, endothelial function, blood flow, immune system function, blood pressure, and metabolic health. It doesn't matter if it's a traditional wooden sauna, an infrared sauna, an infrared sauna blanket, or anything else that elevates your body temperature above what's normal. Bond charge infrared sauna blankets have the advantage of shining far infrared light that can penetrate deeper into your tissues than regular saunas can. It warms up in two minutes to the optimal temperature of 70 degrees Celsius and it's low in EMF. You can get a 15% discount by heading over to bondcharge.com forward slash seamlund and use the code seam for 15% discount. All right, back to the video. Let's start with fixing oscillation, but we also have to talk about entrainment because to fix oscillation, you need to entrain your circadian rhythms properly. This means bright light exposure upon waking for at least 10 to 15 minutes. 
This bright light signals the brain that it's the morning, and it increases cortisol production, which anchors your circadian rhythm to the morning. Light is the number one regulator of circadian rhythms. Ideally, it should be from the sun, because you're getting unique wavelengths of light from the sun that you don't get from the seasonal affective disorder lamps. But the bright lamps are better than nothing at all. For older people, bright light exposure might not be enough to produce enough cortisol because they've already aged substantially. That's why I think that higher caffeine intake might be useful because caffeine raises cortisol. Your natural cortisol is low, so you need some extra kick. Just consume the caffeine in the morning. This might also be the reason why coffee consumption is associated with lower rates of heart disease, lower rates of Alzheimer's, and lower rates of cancer. The caffeine partly contributes to circadian regulation. You can also exercise in the morning because exercise is another cue. If you exercise earlier in the day, you shift your entire circadian rhythm earlier into the day. If you exercise later in the day, you shift your circadian rhythm later into the day. Nighttime exercise will also disrupt the circadian rhythm, but people with a late chronotype will still shift their circadian rhythm earlier if they exercise in the evening, whereas early chronotype people shift their circadian rhythm later. Next, block artificial blue light at night. This disrupts your melatonin production, reducing your sleep quality and disrupting your circadian rhythms. You can dim down the lights, wear blue blocking glasses, use screen filters, etc. Older people also suffer here because their bodies aren't making that much melatonin, which contributes to their reduced sleep quality and duration. That's just part of aging, but it's not healthy and you want to avoid that. So as you get older, you should consider melatonin supplementation to force higher melatonin levels and maintain circadian oscillation. You can also take melatonin whenever you've changed time zones or have jet lag to quickly realign your circadian rhythms. Next, maintaining a consistent sleep schedule appears to be as important as total sleep duration when it comes to health. And going to bed around the same time also maintains circadian oscillations. Having a very irregular sleep schedule causes circadian disruption and keeps your body guessing. Having regular meal times also fits here. If you eat your food around the same time every day, your body develops a circadian rhythm around that, which strengthens oscillations. You definitely want to avoid eating at night and too close to bedtime. The reason you see lower oscillation with age is partly because of damage to the circadian clock system and the brain that hosts the master circadian clock called the SCN. The brain shrinks during age and it accumulates different waste material. This also results in lower circadian free running. Fortunately, there's research that you can reverse the degradation of the circadian clocks. The key metabolite for this reversal is NAD, which is a major coenzyme involved in energy metabolism and every other process in the body. NAD maintains the robustness of your circadian clock system and circadian rhythms. Ways to increase NAD include calorie restriction, time-restricted eating, exercise, dietary polyphenols, and circadian rhythm alignment itself. Supplementing NAD boosters is also another potential way to increase NAD during aging, because older people tend to have lower NAD. The interesting thing here is that the chronic jet lag syndrome that's the result of aging coincides with the NAD reduction that happens during aging as well. That's because NAD is involved with the circadian rhythms and circadian rhythm alignment is linked to NAD production and NAD recycling. So it's a vicious cycle. Circadian disruption causes low NAD and low NAD causes circadian disruption. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to circadian rhythm entrainment and circadian rhythm alignment. Now, of course, just looking at the sunrise and looking at the sunset isn't going to fix aging. It's not going to make you live to the age of 150 or something like that. It will slow down the natural process of aging. You're going to be healthier for longer compared to someone who were to have a misaligned circadian rhythm. One of the ways to maintain circadian clock function is to sleep properly. Check out my video about how I increased my sleep score from 70s to 100 next.